Good evening once again. I'm Ali Velshi. Day 364 of the Biden administration. Tonight, the House committee investigating the Capitol riot is escalating its inquiry, reaching deeper into Donald Trump's inner circle for information about January 6th. Tonight, the committee issued subpoenas for testimony and documents to lawyers who the committee says promoted the big lie and participated in attempts to disrupt or delay the certification of the election results. Rudy Giuliani, Sidney Powell, and Jenna Ellis. The panel also sent a subpoena to former Trump campaign advisor Boris Epstein. The committee's letter to Giuliani says, quote, between mid-November 2020 and January 6, 2021 and thereafter, you actively promoted claims of election fraud on behalf of former President Trump and sought to convince state legislatures to take steps to overturn the election results, end quote. The panel says Sidney Powell and Jenna Ellis also actively pushed claims of election fraud. As for Boris Epstein, the committee says he reportedly spoke with Trump on the morning of January 6th about options to delay the certification of the 2020 election results. The panel says he also reportedly attended meetings at the Willard Hotel, where Trump allies reportedly led a war room on efforts to overturn Joe Biden's win. Now, in case you've forgotten the baseless fraud allegations and conspiracy theories the Trump legal team put forward as they tried to keep Biden from the presidency, here's a little reminder. There was a, a plan from a centralized place to execute these various acts of voter fraud, specifically focused on big cities and specifically focused on, as you would imagine, big cities controlled by Democrats. There are other aspects of this fraud that, at this point, I really can't reveal. They conducted themselves in a way that suggests that there was fraud. One of the things that does involve fraud is not making it possible for the people who are supposed to inspect to inspect. That's a fraud. That's a fraud on the voters. What we are really dealing with here and uncovering more by the day is the massive influence of communist money through Venezuela, Cuba, and likely China in the interference with our elections here in the United States. If the United States caves to corruption or this type of election integrity disaster, then no election will be secure from here on out. And we all need to be keenly aware of that. We will not back down. We won't be intimidated. President Trump will not be intimidated. Earlier tonight, the January 6th committee member Adam Schiff commented on the new subpoenas. Rudy Giuliani was really at the center of things. Um, he was one of the most aggressive promoters of that big lie about the election. Uh, he was involved in trying to get these state legislators uh, to uh, send alternate slates of electors or to delay sending slates of electors. They were involved in urging the president reportedly to seize voting machines. That's the kind of thing you see in, uh, in, in the developing world. Our inquiry is broader than just what happened on a single day. Uh, it's all of the multiple lines of effort to overturn the election. Now, today was also the day that Senate Democrats began their effort to pass voting rights protections. Debate got underway this afternoon. Voting is now expected to take place tomorrow evening. But Republican opposition, as well as resistance to changing the filibuster from at least two Democrats in the Senate, mean almost certain failure. Despite that, Democratic leader Chuck Schumer has made it clear he will still pursue a vote and a rule change. The eyes of the nation will be watching what happens this week in the United States Senate. If Republicans choose to continue the filibuster, their filibuster of voting rights legislation, we must consider and vote on the rule changes that are appropriate and necessary to restore the Senate and make voting legislation possible. The partisan election takeover bills that Democrats want to ram through this week are not, not in any way, successors of the civil rights legislation from the mid 20th century. Some of our colleagues across the aisle reconfirmed they had the courage and the principle to keep their word and to protect the institution as well. But too many of our colleagues across the aisle still want to respond to a 50-50 Senate with a rule-breaking power grab. 
Earlier this evening, Majority Leader Chuck Schumer added this. If the Republicans block cloture on the legislation before us, I will put forward a proposal to change the rules to allow for a talking filibuster on this legislation. Meanwhile, several groups are pushing the senators to enact voting rights. Today, the NAACP president, Derek Johnson, sent a letter to all 100 senators in which he wrote, Our democracy may be standing in its final hour. The bedrock of freedom in America lies in our sacred right to vote. We still have time to act, but the window of opportunity is rapidly narrowing.